Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'll show you how to create this professional render step by step using only Photoshop, transforming it from this to this. If you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure to subscribe. Let's get started. Step one, set the background. All right, first thing you wanna do is get rid of that white background. Select the layer, grab the magic wand tool and click on the white empty space. Now, add a clipping mask, but make sure you hold Alt while pressing on the clipping mask because we're selecting the background, not the building itself. Next, let's go ahead and render the ground. I'll go with this one for now, let's try it out. By the way, also, everything I'm using in this video will be linked down below in the description. Okay, let's place it properly, then hide the layer for now. Start selecting the outline of the ground using the polygonal lasso tool. Once you're done, unhide the layer, then click on the clipping mask without holding Alt, since this time we're selecting the area we want to keep. I'm just going to add a few more layers over it to make things look more realistic. Since we already have the area selected, go to the floor layer, hold Ctrl, and click on the layer itself to reselect the space. Then add a clipping mask just like before. Now change the blending mode, grab a soft brush, adjust its size, lower the opacity and flow, and start gently removing some parts on the clipping mask to blend everything nicely together. Let's move on to the sky. I searched for a skyscraper and modern city background to match the vibe. Here, I'm testing out different skies. Now, add the skyscraper layer, lower its opacity, and remove its background. Since we're selecting something we don't want, press Alt while adding the clipping mask. Once everything looks good, select all the background layers, group them together, and name the group Background. Hide it for now, this makes it easier to move on to the next step. Step 2. Add textures. Alright, now let's start adding some textures. Create a new group and name it Texture. I'm going to grab a concrete texture and start applying it all around the building. To freely adjust the size, just hold Ctrl while resizing. After that, add a clipping mask and lower the opacity depending on what looks best. Repeat the same process across the whole building, just copy the layer, play around with the size and opacity until it feels right. You can also try the pattern method if you want. Open the concrete layer, then go to Edit to find pattern. After that, go back. Select the area where you want to apply the material and create a pattern adjustment layer. From there, you can tweak the angle and scale until it looks perfect. This method can save you some time, but sometimes it can be a bit tricky. Okay, once that's done, let's move on to the window textures. You can download any render-ready image, select the part you want, and then press Ctrl plus J to copy only that selected area. I'm gonna do the same, just copy this layer again using Ctrl plus J. Now let's start adjusting the window textures, play around with the size and opacity, and make sure there's no distortion. Clean up anything that sticks out of the window frame. Here I'm working on the smaller windows, since the image itself is small. Now let's move on to the curtain wall. Same exact steps, nothing different. You might want to use a horizontal flip here. After pressing Ctrl plus T to transform, Right-click and choose Flip Horizontal from the menu. Just a quick note, we're still working on the first layer of textures here. We'll make more adjustments later to get the most realistic render possible. Okay, I think I'll change the upper curtain wall because it's not matching the others. So I'm just repeating the same steps again to get the look I want. There's a bit of distortion, but I'll leave it for now, we'll fix it later. Step 3. Add Shadows. Now that the textures are in place, let's add some shadows to make everything pop a bit more. Here's how it goes. Click on the layer where you want to add the shadow, then create a new layer right above it. Right click on that new layer and choose Create Clipping Mask. This will make sure the shadow only affects the selected layer underneath. Next, lower the opacity of this new layer. Grab a soft brush, adjust its size, and start gently painting shadows around the corners and edges to give the building more depth and realism. Repeat this same process for every texture where you want to add some shadow. Take your time, small soft shadows make a big difference. Now, let's unhide the background to see how everything looks together. Okay, not bad, it's starting to come together nicely. 
but I'm still not too happy with the upper curtain wall texture, so I'll hide the new texture I just added, then select the previous one instead. Now, from the adjustment layers, add a hue saturation layer and tweak it until the orange tones stand out more. Alright, that looks much better. Next, I'll adjust the background size and opacity a bit, and then add a brightness contrast layer to the concrete texture. I want it to look a little darker and richer. Now it's time to bring in some life. Step 4. Add life. Let's add trees to the background. Usually I use a group of different trees, but for this one I'll start with a single tree. I'll make a few copies, play around with the opacity, size, and direction to make them look natural and realistic. After finishing one side, select all the tree layers by clicking the first one, then holding shift and clicking the last one. Press Ctrl plus J to duplicate them to the other side. You can flip or resize them, that's totally fine. The goal here is to create a nice visual hierarchy among the trees. Finally, let's add a car to complete the scene. Adjust its size so it fits nicely into the composition. Now, let's start adding some human figures. Since this project looks like a public space, we want to give that lively, busy feeling, so we'll be adding quite a few people to the scene. When you're placing the figures, make sure there's a sense of hierarchy and depth. That means some people should be closer to the camera, while others are farther away in the background. Keep that in mind while you're distributing them around the scene. This helps make the render look more natural and realistic, just like a real busy place. Step 5. Finishing touches. All right. Finishing. As we can see, some of the concrete materials still look a bit sketchy, so let's fix that. We'll define the new textures as new patterns. This part should be easy for you, especially if you've tried it before, or if you've seen my previous videos. Here's what to do. Open a textures group, then go above all the layers you've made. Select the layer by holding control and clicking on it, or on its clipping mask, depending on your setup. Next, go to the adjustment layers and add a pattern. Here, pay close attention to the angle because the texture has a direction and you want it to look natural and consistent. And of course, don't forget to adjust the opacity and change the blending mode to multiply for all of those layers. That's what's really gonna make them blend in nicely and look realistic. Repeat the same process for all the concrete textures and that's it. Everything should now look clean, polished and ready for your final render. Step 6. Adding light and shadows. First, let's define the light source. Here the sky already has a bit of lighting on the left, so that's where our main light is coming from, the front left side. This means the left part of the building will be bright, while the right side will be shaded. Start by selecting the concrete layer, then create a new layer on top. Grab a soft brush, choose a light orange color, and begin adding the lighting. After that, adjust the blending mode and opacity until it looks natural. Before we move on, let's also draw a light source in the sky. Create a new layer, increase your brush size, and softly paint a warm glow on the left side, just to emphasize the lit direction. Now let's add shadows to the trees on the left. Create a new layer above all of them, then select each tree one by one by holding control and clicking on them. Use a dark color and paint the shaded areas. Once done, change the blending mode and opacity to match the lighting. Next, move to the other side, add light to the trees using the same steps, but this time with a light orange color. Okay, now let's continue by adding light to the building itself. Create a new layer, grab your brush, paint the light, and again play around with blending mode and opacity until it looks good. Once that's done, let's add shadows on the right side of the building. Select the texture layer, create a new color layer, Grab the brush, use a dark tone, and paint the shade. Then adjust opacity and blending mode as needed. Repeat the same process for all concrete parts that should be shaded. After that, let's add a shadow to the left side of the building. Use the polygonal lasso tool to select that area. Go to the adjustment layer, choose solid color, pick a dark color, change its blending mode to multiply, and lower the opacity. Make sure everything on that side looks shaded according to the light direction. Okay, now I'll just fix the shadow a bit and also adjust the shade on this side. You can see we're getting close to the result we wanted, just a few more details. Now, let's add shadows for the trees. 
Go to the tree layer, press Ctrl C to copy it, then click on the glass texture layer and press Ctrl plus V to paste. Right click the new tree layer, select clipping mask and change the blending mode. Duplicate the shadow layer a few times and spread it across the glass areas. Oh, I almost forgot. Let's shade this tree too. And while we're at it, add the tree's shadow on the concrete wall. Copy the tree layer, paste it above the concrete wall, clip it, then adjust blending mode and opacity. Now add the tree's shadow on the ground. Place it in the corner, adjust it, and then apply a blur effect. Go to the Filter tab, choose Blur Studio, and soften it a bit. Add a touch of extra shadow to the areas affected by the trees in the building. Finally, let's add shadows for the human figures. Select the person layer by holding Ctrl and clicking on it. Then, go to Adjustment Layer to Solid Color. Choose Black, press Ctrl plus T to transform it. Hold Shift and drag it downward to create the shadow. Lower the opacity and repeat the same steps for all the people in the scene. We'll fix the shadow angles later. Okay, so here, since there's already a shadow, I'm going to remove it and create a new one. All right, that looks better. Now, I'm adjusting the angle of the shadows so they match the direction of the light. Let's continue by adding shadows to all the people. I'm also changing the blending mode of the building's light. I feel it needs to be a bit whiter. Just select the light layer and switch its blending mode to linear. Now, let's add some shade to the people on this side, since there are trees around them casting shadows. Then continue adding shadows to the rest of the people. You can really feel how everything is starting to look more realistic and finally make sense. It might take a couple of hours of work, but the result is definitely worth it. You'll get a satisfying and professional looking render. I'm adding a bit more shadow to the tree, and now I'm also adding tree shadows to the rest of the windows by copying the one we already made. Finally, I'm adding a hue and saturation layer and playing a bit with the colors. And that's it guys, we've reached a professional render that looks amazing, all done just using Photoshop. We can even push it further if you'd like. I can make a video showing the post-processing part too. Okay, I'm doing a series on rendering architectural drawings in Photoshop, so make sure to subscribe and leave a comment telling me what render I should do next. I hope this video helps you, and bye for now.